Hello everyone, my name is Anis El Ghibli. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Center of Wireless Communications in University of Oulu in Finland. Today I will be uh, presenting our paper entitled uh, Layer-wise Federated Group Alternating Direction Method of Multipliers for Communication Efficient Decentralized Deep Learning. This is a joint work with uh, Saber Ahmed and Mehdi Benes from the Center of Wireless uh, communications in University of Oulu and also with Jihong Park from Deakin University in Australia. As we all know, machine learning is a key enabler for Beyond 5G applications. In Beyond 5G, we are aiming at uh, up to 99.99 reliability and less than one millisecond latency to support applications such as autonomous driving. Unlike 5G UR LLC, which used to rely on short packet transmission, in beyond 5G, some applications must simultaneously support uh, high data rate and uh, massive number of connections. Uh, as an example of such applications is uh, autonomous drone uh, swarm in a rescue mission, which requires not only UR LLC, but also a massive number of wireless control loops for inter-drone collision avoidance. With that, we are moving from UR uh, LLC to extreme UR LLC or next generation predictive UR LLC, which uh, leverages the recent advancement in machine learning to enable highly accurate prediction of uh, uh, traffic states and other uh, key metrics. This is a good paper uh, about extreme UR LLC. Now I describe uh, some challenges in training machine learning models. The first challenge is the lack of data samples at a single entity. And that's due to the fact that data is generated at the edge devices. Therefore, it's uh, distributed by nature. Uh, and shipping the raw data to the cloud um, uh, raises uh, the following issues. First, it may violate the data privacy. It also may introduce a large latency and large amount of communication overhead, which becomes uh, uh, a big challenge under limited communication resources, calling for communication efficient and data uh, and privacy preserving distributed machine learning algorithms. Here I describe some uh, schemes that have been uh, proposed to allow communication efficient and uh, privacy preserving distributed and decentralized machine learning and I also propose our solution. Those uh, algorithms uh, uh, that have been proposed to, to ensure privacy and to ensure communication efficiency, uh, they do not allow uh, sharing the raw data, instead they either allow sharing the, uh, uh, the uh, gradient vector per learning iteration or the model itself. Uh, I will start with federated learning. Federated learning, as we can see from the figure, is a server-based scheme where at every iteration, every worker performs one or several local operations. For example, every worker could be computing the gradient with respect to a global model that has been downloaded from the server using a randomly selected mini batch of data, or it could be performing a number of local uh, SGD iterations. In this case, when it's computing the gradient, then every worker will share the gradient with the server. In case of performing number of local SGD iterations, the workers will share their models with the server. Then the parameter server performs one global computation step. It could be one global SGD iteration if the server receives the gradient vector, or one model averaging step if the server is receiving the models. In our uh, prior work, we proposed JDMM. It's a decentralized algorithm. I'm not gonna go into the details of JDMM. Uh, for the details, you can check this paper and you can also watch uh, this video in this link. Um, I will just explain it in high level. Uh, in a nutshell, JDMM uh, solves this optimization problem. Uh, as we can see from this constraint, every worker except the first and the last one has a joint constraint with only two neighbors, the right and the left ones. With that, what we did, we divide the workers into two groups, head group and tail group. At every iteration, first of all, all the head groups, uh, all the workers in the head group uh, update their models or their primal uh, variables in parallel since they do not have any joint constraints. 
And then every worker will share its updated model with its two neighbors from the tail group. Then every worker in the tail group will, uh, will update its model and uh, it will do the same. It will share its model or its primal values with its two corresponding neighbors from the head group. And after uh, the primal variables are updated, then every worker will update the dual variables locally. In this paper, we extend JDMM uh, to allow for the uh, deep neural network architecture where we don't need, uh, we don't really uh, enforce the, the, the constraint here to be in the, whole, in the whole model. So we can do per layer consensus. So the two workers that do not need to be agree in all uh, of the layers. They could be agree in the models or the weights of subset of the layers. And we also account for the stochastic data sampling where at every iteration, uh, like the federated learning, every, at every iteration, uh, a randomly selected mini patch of data is used to update. And we also allow for number of local updates before sharing the outcome with neighbors. Moreover, we allow uh, for, like, we give different time periodicity to different layers. For example, the, la the, the small layers can be shared every T local iteration, where the large layers, we can, share, we can share them every beta T iterations, where beta uh, is greater than uh, one. So when we share the large layers less frequently, we significantly reduce the communication uh, overhead per iteration. Now I describe the steps for updating the primal and the dual uh, variables at iteration k plus one. As I mentioned in the previous slide, first of all, all uh, head workers will update their models in parallel. Uh, this is the augmented Lagrangian function at iteration k plus one. The end worker will use the k version of its left and right neighbors uh, and the k version of the dual variables to uh, update its own model. Uh, since in deep neural network, this uh, problem cannot be solved in closed form expression, we perform a number of local iterations. And then after those, this number of local iterations, the head worker will share its outcome with its two neighbors from the tail group. And then uh, every worker in the tail group will update the same way, except that every worker in the tail group will use the K plus one version of its right and left neighbors from the head group. So the head uh, workers are always one step ahead of the uh, tail workers in terms of updating their primal variables. After that, every worker will update the dual uh, variables locally. Now I describe the simulation results. Uh, for the data set, we used MNIST data set, which is uh, images uh, for handwritten digits from zero to nine, as we can see in this figure. For the neural network architecture, we used uh, two architectures, multi-layer perceptron and convolutional neural network. As we can see from these two tables, for MLB, we considered six fully connected layers. The first layer has the largest number of weights, accounting for about 82% of the total number of weights. For CNN, we considered uh, this architecture where we have three convolutional layers and then two fully connected layers. The first fully connected layer, layer four, uh, has the largest number of weights and accounts for 90, more than 97% of the total number of weights. We conducted experiments using four workers and 2,000 samples. We distributed them equally across workers. We considered three variants for uh, federated JDMM. We refer to them as 1x, 2x, and 4x. Uh, what we mean by that, first of all, in 1x, every layer is shared at every iteration. And when I say every iteration, I mean every global iteration. So every uh, uh, at every gl global iteration, every worker still runs number of local iterations to uh, update its local model. So when we say e 1x, then every layer is shared every, at every iteration. 2x uh, means every layer except the largest layer is still shared every iteration, but the largest layer is shared every other iteration. And for 4x, the largest layer is shared every fourth iteration. So as we share the largest layer less frequently, we are reducing the communication uh, overhead per iteration. Now I describe the simulation results. 
uh, I will start with the conversion speed. Uh, we compare all variants of federated JDMM with uh, federated learning and standalone. In standalone configuration, every worker is trained at using, using its local data set. There is no collaborative learning in this case. As we can see from these two figures, all variants of federated JDMM uh, have a much faster conversion speed compared to federated learning. Now we compare the algorithms in terms of the accuracy, we see similar results. Uh, after a few iterations, uh, we see significant increase in the accuracy of federated JDMM compared to FL, for example, for MLP setting. Uh, after 20 iterations, federated learning uh, accuracy was uh, around 30%, while it's more than 80% for all variants of JDMM, uh, federated JDMM. Uh, when we let all the algorithms run for 100 iteration and then report the accuracy, uh, the, t the, the testing accuracy numbers, here we see some numbers here for CNN and MLP configurations. For example, for CNN, uh, the 1x uh, configuration for federated JDMM where we share the largest layer every iteration has the highest accuracy. Then it comes after that, the 2x configuration and the FL, they have the same accuracy. So here, when we share, uh, when we re reduce the number of times, like when we share the largest layer less frequently, we see slight drop in the accuracy, but we, there is uh, a huge saving in the communication by just uh, like uh, reduce the number of times we, sell, we share the largest layer. As we uh, share the largest layer less frequently, we see a drop in the accuracy. Of course, there is a saving in the communication, but that comes in a, uh, in, at the cost of uh, less accuracy. Therefore, there is a trade-off here between the communication and the accuracy. Uh, we see here uh, the, la the, the lowest accuracy is when every worker, of course, here there is no communication at all. So we save in communication, but uh, we pay a high cost of uh, low accuracy or low testing accuracy. So standalone has the, uh, the lowest accuracy compared to all of the algorithms. And we see the similar behavior for uh, MLP setting. Now we compare all the algorithms in terms of the communication efficiency. We uh, measure the communication efficiency by the total energy consumed in 100 iterations. We assume every element in the model Victor needs 32 bits to be transmitted. We performed 1,000 uh, experiments. Every experiment we randomly drop for workers in 100 by 100 meters square grid. All other bandwidth and power parameters as shown here. Uh, we plot the complement CDF of the communication uh, energy cost. Uh, as we can see from these two figures, uh, uh, federated uh, JDMM performs uh, much better in terms of saving the communication energy compared to federated learning. And that savings uh, can grow significantly larger uh, than federated uh, learning as we uh, allow to uh, share the large layer uh, less frequently. Uh, to conclude, uh, layer-wise federated JDMM achieves faster conversions, higher accuracy, and lower communication costs as compared to federated learning. Uh, I would like to also mention that we have been working in other extensions for JDMM, such as quantize JDMM, where every worker quantizes the model before sharing it. So we reduce uh, the payload size per channel use. We also were, uh, have been working in uh, another uh, extension of ADMM called Federated ADMM, where uh, if we, uh, all workers can access the bandwidth non-orthogonally and uh, we uh, allow workers to, uh, to uh, train over uh, analog communication system motivated by the fact that the parameter server is interested in the aggregated output of all workers, not the individual value of every worker. To know more about uh, these two works, you can check these two papers. Uh, with that, I would like uh, to thank you for watching my video. And if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to email me. Thank you.